welcome to Jesse Bear Book Club. Today I want to talk to you about Wild Cards 8, One-Eyed Jack. So be warned, spoilers ahead. I really enjoyed this book. I liked learning more about Jerry, the projectionist, and felt true empathy for his character. His overarching storyline held the book's plot together very nicely. As for the Veronica plot, it was nice to see a little more of her as she has been a side character for so long but I thought her story a little unnecessary. Seeing her discover that she has wildcard powers was very interesting. It was also good learning the fallout from Typhoid Croyd's drama is still going on, and that will be intriguing to see what happens in upcoming books. But I felt Veronica's chapter, with the bank scene and the jumper scenes, as well as all the sex scenes, didn't add very much to the story. As for our new female lead character, Dr. Cody Havero, I find her a bit bland, very much the sexy, intriguing, tough girl character who doesn't need a man, but still ends up being rescued all the time by Tachyon. I did enjoy reading her POVs when she was interacting with Blaze, however. I do think she is destined for disappointment, though, when it comes to her love life with Tachyon. I still love Tachyon, even though he is a man whore, a wet blanket, and a really bad parent. I found Trudy Pirandello's chapter engrossing and hilarious. Duncan Towers is so obviously based on Donald Trump, I laughed out loud while reading. And when Catherine the Great's kinky furniture comes to life, it was whimsical to say the least. As was fantasy's naked dance routine. My hat comes off to Kevin Andrew Murphy for a very funny chapter. Lazy Dragon gave us our first real look at The Rocks, Ellis Island, and The Jumpers, which was great. And it was also great to have a look at the Immaculate Egret gang close up. And his odd body sharing with his sister gave his character more depth than a mere thug. I also need to talk about Dr. Mark Meadows, the Hippie King. I personally love Mark Meadows because he reminds me of my father, because they were both big hippies at heart. I loved his chapter, and I think it has a lot of foreshadowing for persecution for wildcards in the coming books. We also see this foreshadowing in Jerry's chapters. As for Mark losing custody of his daughter, it was very sad, but very realistic. As for Sunflower, in my opinion, she is a really nasty human being. I can't wait to see what Mark will do in the coming books to get his daughter back. I also really enjoyed Lady Black's chapters. Her chapter really emphasized the different class systems and how Nats view wildcards. All wildcards, whether jokers or aces, but also how jokers view aces as separate from themselves and how many aces, like Cyclone, view themselves as superior to all and as the born leaders of the next generation. This environment can only breed danger and hate as it is doing on Ellis Island, the rocks. I also think Lady Black is a much better female protagonist than Cody. She is more fleshed out and realistic. I feel hands down though my favorite character in this book is definitely the oddity. The oddity's chapter 16 Candles by Stephen Lee Miller reminded me why I love reading. It was beautifully written and so very human. It touched my heart on so many levels. The fact that John, Evan and Patty used their love of each other to overcome the jumpers, to defeat David and to defy bloat was an emotional journey on its own, but we get so much more information in this chapter about the rocks. Making Ellis Island even more intriguing. But the oddity's internal struggle was definitely one of the most interesting pieces of writing I have read in a long time, and I think the oddity is one of my new favorite wildcard characters. I had never really given the oddity much thought before, seeing them as a side character and puppet man's thug. Tachyon's chapters in this book are enjoyable, even if he is more self-involved than usual. Ignoring his grandson Blaze, who very obviously needs his help and attention for his new love interest Cody and his clinic. 
He also refuses to admit that Blaze needs any sort of psychiatric help. After all the trauma he has suffered, the death of his mother and his uncle, the imprisonment of his father at his grandfather Tachyon's hands, and his status as a mount of tea malice. But Tachyon chooses to ignore all of this and instead wallows in self-pity about losing his own hand. For all his faults, however, I am still a big Tachyon fan, and I always enjoy his chapters. Blaze's chapters were great. It was brilliant to finally get his POV of the world. I found it very interesting, though, that he never thought about tea malice. Perhaps Tachyon has made a psychic block on that subject, or perhaps Blaze has simply integrated that into part of his own personality. Blaze's infatuation with Cody is very normal for a boy his age. Especially for a boy to have an infatuation with an older woman when he has lost his mother at such a young age. Unfortunately, Blaze lacks any sort of healthy communication skills. And has been established in the last two books that Blaze needs to fear somebody to respect them. Learning more about the jumpers through Blaze's eyes was great. However, the scene where he becomes a jumper is horrific, to say the least. I cannot wait to see what happens to Blaze in the upcoming books. As far as Fade Out's chapters, I'm not the biggest fan of the Mafia Gang War plotlines in this series, but I honestly did not see the Kien body switch coming and thought it was a great twist. The Jumper's alliance with Ken will cause havoc in New York in the upcoming books, and I look forward to seeing it unfold. As for the twist that Latham was the kingpin of the Jumpers, I had figured that out before Jerry uncovered it, but it was still interesting to see. And it only adds to Latham's reputation of being a horrible man. I cannot wait to see what Latham will do with his teenage gang. I am also very interested to see how Bloat, Latham and Ken will navigate each other in the upcoming books. At present, I am impatiently waiting for Wild Card 9 to arrive from Amazon, but I am reading other stuff in the meantime. Please like this video if you're a big Wild Cards fan, just like me, and leave a comment letting me know what you thought of Wild Cards 8, and please subscribe to this channel for more Wild Card book reviews coming soon. See you next time on Jessie Bear Book Club. Bye!